What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys an ABC deck profile, one of my favorite decks of all time. But funny enough, for one of my favorite decks, I haven't actually updated it in a while. However, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to play ABC in today's tier limit format, December 2022. And I think this list is very, very powerful and you guys can compete with this list in today's format. Now, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays. We just hit 8,000 subscribers. Thank you guys all for supporting the channel so much. I appreciate every single one of you. So make sure you guys stick around for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. I don't want to keep you guys waiting too long. So with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right. So just before we get started in today's video, I do want to preface the video by saying the reason I haven't updated ABC in a while is because in today's format where tier limits is the best deck, and that means everyone is playing bestials to beat the tier limits matchup, the ABC monsters are susceptible to those bestials, which means that you have a hard time sometimes setting up your combo on top of that even though it sounds cool with your opponent's ishizu monsters that could potentially mill your pieces and then you have access to your abc dragon buster but the thing is if those pieces aren't in the graveyard due to the bestial monsters then it doesn't really matter right but if you build the deck correctly and i think in today's video you guys will see the reasoning why i'm playing these cards you guys can actually still play abc competitively so let's get started with the deck profile we are playing the standard abc ratios i believe two a assault core three b buster drake and two c crush wyvern keep in mind that c and a aren't the best to see in your hand b is something you want to abuse over and over again so that's why we're maxing out on the b and then we're also playing the two union driver the reason we're playing two union driver is because you always want to have one in deck even if you draw one because union hanger will only be able to resolve for a driver if it's in your deck not in your hand now if you do draw one you can still kind of play around it because we're playing three unauthorized reactivation this card lets you equip from your hand so if you draw the driver and you draw reactivation then you can still kind of combo there but it requires you to draw these two in tandem with each other whereas hanger which by the way we're playing three hanger of course hanger if you draw the driver and you're only playing the one then it kind of becomes a lot more difficult right so that's why we're playing the two driver even if you draw one you can still kind of play around it but you always are going to need one in deck and another reason of course is because the ishizu monsters are going to be milling your deck a lot of the time and if they mill one of your union drivers and you're only playing the one then it does also become really difficult to play this deck and driver is obviously very important to your combos right so that's why we're playing the two driver here and again of course the three unauthorized reactivation and three union hanger then we're playing the honorary abc card is what i like to call it three Therion king regulus we're also playing the two Therion discoliseum i think these cards are obviously very powerful regulus being an omni negate for you is very powerful in today's format also on top of that when you activate its effect even if your opponent does randomly have a bestial monster for your piece it will still be able to summon itself get you that extra body on the board and it's going to be an omni negate right so that's why i really like the three regulus the two discoliseum to get into the regulus this. this Coliseum also helps you protect your monsters by battle sometimes, which is really nice. Now that's it for the ABC core. That's it for the theory on stuff. I'm just going to count this within the ABC core because this is like all the engine stuff. And then for the non-engine stuff or technically a separate engine, we're playing three water enchantress of the temple. Yes, we're playing the brave package, the adventure package, because I think this package is so good into today's format and no one is actually playing it and no one is thinking about it. Keep in mind, if your opponent uses Ishizu monsters and mills your water enchantress, that, how powerful is that? Like, that's so crazy because you can just activate the water enchantress effect in the graveyard, get your right of arm easier, and then you get the entire adventure package going just with that. So that's the thing with this deck that I think is really cool because you're playing cards like water enchantress, which by the way, isn't a light or dark, so I won't get hit with a bestial and it's good to be sent to the graveyard. Same thing with your pieces. Even though these can be hit with bestial monsters, if they are milled to the graveyard, they can still be really powerful for you as well, right? So I think this deck in this way can actually be competitive. And again, the water enchantress, the adventure package is going to get you to an omni negate the theory is going to get you to an omni negate which actually isn't super prevalent in today's format not a lot of decks are making omni negates and not a lot of people are playing cards to break omni negates not a lot of people are on droplets or dark ruler no more right now in today's format because they're not really that great into the tier limit matchup so for that reason if you're setting up your negates you know those are going to stay on the board which is really really nice but back to the deck profile sorry i got off track i really wanted to just explain why it was a really good package to be playing so we're playing the three water enchantress we're playing two griffin rider i like playing two just because again with the Ishizu stuff you don't want to mill your only griffin rider and then you're kind of in a weird position where you don't have access to it so that's why i like to play the two we're only playing two right of artemis here and the reason i'm playing two only is because water enchantress can get it back from your graveyard it doesn't just have to get it from your deck you guys can play the third and up the count to 43 cards in the main deck as you guys can see we're only playing 42 so you guys can play the third one up it to 43 i don't think that's a huge issue but i think two is just perfectly fine because again your water enchantress is always going to be able to get this back from your graveyard and of course we're playing the one 
one Faithful Adventure and the one Draco back. Yes, I know a lot of these cards we were playing at two because we don't want them to get milled, but the thing is, Faithful Adventure is just bad to have in your hand, if I'm being honest with you. Unlike these cards like Driver, which can at least be used with your unauthorized reactivation, Griffin Rider, which can just be a free body for you, even if you don't draw any of the other adventure package, you can just special summon it to start your turn. So unlike those cards, like this card does absolutely nothing really for you. So that's why I'm only like to play the one, and we just gotta hope it doesn't get milled, right? As same with the one Draco back, I think this is all you need. And then of course we're playing the one Terraforming for your Disc Coliseum as well as your Union Hanger. We gotta be playing the one Terra. And then we're playing the anti-meta hate cards. The cards that every deck has to be playing in today's format. It's a three Bastille Magnamu, the three Bastille Druid Swarm, and then we're playing three Ghost Spell. So why are we playing three Ghost Spell over something like three Sarnier? Well, the reason I actually like to play three Ghost Spell is because what was one of the issues that I mentioned earlier? It's where your opponents use the Bastille monsters to banish your pieces so that they can get bodies on the board and you can't continue your combo. But what's really cool about the Ghost Spell is not only can it negate the Tier Limits monsters, not only can it negate the Shizu monsters, but it can also negate the Bistials from banishing your cards to summon themselves. So that's why I really like Ghost Spell because it's a very powerful defensive card, but it's also a really powerful offensive card because if you're about to combo, you're about to push for a game, let's say in turn three or whatever, your opponent has a Bistial and you know that Bistial is going to really hurt your combo, you can just activate the Ghost Spell and you know you're going to be safe, which is really, really powerful. And that's why we're playing the three Ghost Spell. And then lastly, we're playing three Prod Prosperity, but you can get away with not playing it, right? So if you guys don't have access, Access to prosperity you guys can actually cut this and then you'd be down to what like 39 so you guys can technically play the uh the third red of armies here or you guys can just also play three bestial sarnir so that you have more tier limits hate but i think prosperity is really good because when you are going first which you by the way always want to go first with this deck not that it can't play going second but going first this deck can set up some pretty crazy boards so this card helps you set up those boards and that's why we like to play the prosperity at three and that's it for the main deck it's 42 cards in the main deck again the ghost spell i think is very important in today's format specifically in abc because you're using it both defensively as just an anti-tier limits anti yashizu card but you're really also using it offensively as something that's going to protect your pieces and then that's going to help you combo as well so that's why i really like the three ghost spell i would not recommend playing this deck if you're not playing the ghost spell as well this card is just so powerful moving on to the extra deck here i'm going to be honest with you this is pretty standard abc extra deck it's just toolbox that's what abc does best so we're playing the two abc dragon buster the one platinum gadget the one ip nightmare phoenix nightmare unicorn apollyusa playing the access code talker you guys can see how all of if you guys have ever played abc before by the way you guys understand why we're playing all of these cards first turn you're always going to be able to go into apo your platinum gadgets are really important for some of your combos dragon buster of course is your boss monster sometimes you really want to end your boards on something like an ip plus an apple or ip plus platinum gadget so that you can go into apo there's another card that you can go into with ip or just a card that's really good going second and that is your underworld goddess this helps you break boards so we're playing one of that we're playing the one Lina, of course we're playing all light monsters so Lina is very powerful we're playing one dark because we are playing the bisted monsters which are dark monsters and it helps you get the druid form when you send it to the graveyard for a link material so dark is really powerful in today's format we're playing the one barricade board blocker just another toolbox card helps you get back your field spells from your graveyard and it helps you also just discard sometimes when you need to if you need to get an extra piece in the graveyard you can discard that card you can discard the water enchantress to get their effects off so barricade board blocker is just more of a toolbox card then we're playing one Tornado Dragon, one Baguska, Baguska of course into the Fluandries matchup, and one Dweller which of course is really good into the Tier Limits matchup. So this entire extra deck you guys can see is just all toolbox. The main things you guys are going to need are your two Dragon Busters, your Platinum, IP, Apple I would say, and then you can play the Underworld. Look, these are the main things, the rest of the stuff is just toolbox cards. So that's it for the deck profile, I hope you guys enjoyed. You know what, I'm also going to show you guys a quick two card combo, just so you guys can kind of see what this deck can do. So without the Theory on Monsters, without the Water enchantress and the adventure package which by the way you guys can do all the adventure stuff all the theory on stuff with this combo and that's just going to add more layers to your board but what do you guys actually do with the abc combo right well if you open hanger plus any of the pieces it can be b a or c doesn't really matter but if you open hanger plus any of the pieces you have pretty much your full abc combo and then if you have the brave engine or if you have a theory on regulus then you're just adding more layers to your combo right so the bread and butter combo you're just going to start off by activating hanger hanger is going to get a piece to 
to your hand and it doesn't matter what piece you have let's say you have an a you can search the b here we already have the b so we'll search the a again it does not really matter we're going to normal summon our b buster drake we're going to activate the uni hanger but we're not going to be adding a piece here we're actually going to be equipping the union driver I, I think i said adding a piece i meant equipping a piece we're equipping a union driver here because then we can activate the union driver effect to get the last piece that we're missing all right and the last piece here is c crush wyvern so we're going to summon the c or equip the c and then activate its effect to summon itself back onto the field then we're going to be able to link two with these two keep in mind c is going to be able to special summon your a so you can actually just go straight into like this is just a very basic combo but here let's just go into like ip mask arena for example example we're going to activate the effects of c crush y well we'll activate b first because so we can chain it properly people are not really playing ash blossom anyways but just in case people are playing ash blossom we'll go c to special summon the a we'll go b to search any other piece let's just search another b and then what can happen here is we'll just use the three pieces to make our abc dragon buster with our a b and c and boom that's your basic combo over here and now this looks pretty generic right it doesn't look huge well what this combo lets you do is you have a dragon buster banish which is really good into the tier limits matchup right because you're adding a piece also with this combo so you're always going to have access to a banish here and then the ip masquerina is also really nice because let's say we just end our phase and end our turn here right we go to end phase whatever on our opponent's turn we don't have an opponent so we can't really show you anything but what can happen is you can use the buster to tag out summon back your three pieces then you can use IP with your three pieces or two of the pieces to make like Apollo Usa. And then now you have an Apollo with three or four negates, which is really powerful. Now, of course, if your opponent sets up a board, you can use one of their monsters that's integral in their combo and then make an underworld goddess as well. The pieces are going to go to the graveyard, which means you guys are going to get the effects of the pieces when they're sent to the graveyard as well. So you're just gaining a bunch of advantage. So even though this doesn't look like a huge board, this board is actually insanely powerful. Now, imagine this had a Regulus as well. And the reason Regulus would also be really powerful is because when you equip a piece back, you can actually summon that piece. So then what you can actually end on is like an IP Masquerina plus another like Link 2. And then you can end on a Buster. And then you can use the IP plus a Link 2 into an Apple, right? So even just having the Regulus makes this combo so much more greater. And you're going to be having that Omni Negate as well. But this is just a simple two-card combo that I feel like you need to know. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That's my take on ABC for today's format. I hope you guys can see the reasons we're playing certain things at certain ratios or we're playing certain cards. And that's because we need to be able to beat the tier limits matchup, but we also need to be able to protect our cards. Even if we're not playing against the tier limit matchup, Bastilles are still very, very prevalent. And we need to be sure to play around those or play through those. And Ghost Spell is a card that helps you do that, as well as playing multiples of some of the cards so that we don't lose to the Ishizu stuff, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays i also showed you guys the combo in this video but if you guys want more in-depth combos i just showed you guys a really basic one right but if you guys want more like overall combos let me know in the comment section down below and i can make that happen for you guys so thank you guys all for watching and with that thank you signing out peace